she just started bawling. I was like, you've seen it too, haven't you? And she shook her head, yeah. I was like, yeah, there's my confirmation. Right. But, you know, after I saw it, I no longer feared that. I no longer had any fears really of any of that. And I kind of have found my center, my being, to be honest with you. I mean, mm. you don't fear what's going to happen when you know that it's going to be all right. I was mad at the ambulance person for waking me up. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, let me go back. I was comfy. What are you doing? You know, I was mad. I fought them. <laughs> I fought them when they were cramming me in the helicopter. I was not happy. I wanted to go back my life. I have, we have Susan from New York on the phone. Hi, Susan. Hi. How are things? Hi. Were you on hold long? I just looked up and noticed that. No, he dropped me. Oh, okay. I got all right. I'm thinking, oh boy, my my thing. (laughs) I was really interested in what you were talking about with the near death experience because I've had one as well. And I, too, don't remember walking down the corridor. I remember seeing the tunnel. I remember seeing the light. But I was very much on this side. Yep. shall we say. Do you, is that pretty much what your experience was? Exactly. You, yeah. weren't, you weren't meant to go down the tunnel. And I don't remember the message because I don't think I would have been able to handle remembering it. I have to say, I do remember being distinctly being told not yet. Yeah. Well, you remember you know, not yet. when Moses looked upon God and he, his face supposedly lit up and he glowed? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's kind of why we don't remember the message, because it's too much for us. I'll agree with you on that. I'll agree with you on that. I think, you know, I, 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 you know, being a psychic myself and a medium, I often get information I just don't get. I just don't understand it. And you kind of have to take the, the stance of, well, uh, they're telling me for a reason, I I don't understand, but I'm sure I will at some point. Yeah, right, right. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you know, hopefully I can be that calm when it happens <laughs> all the time. Sometimes <laughs> I'm not. Sometimes I'm like, <clears throat> why can't I know now? <laughs> <laughs> I just want oh. one more detail. Just a just a smidge. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit easier. Can we make this? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to call up and put in my two cents. So how did your life change? Afterwards? Yeah. I found out all the voices in my head weren't necessarily me. Okay. Um, I had a particularly virulent strain of swine flu back in the 70s. It was the hospital strain, the stuff that put people in the hospital. Right. And uh, there's about a week and a half I don't remember at all yeah. out of my life. What I do remember at that point was being in a lot of pain because, you know, when you get the flu, you can't breathe. It's painful. It's, it's right. all that. And I remember all of a sudden not feeling anything anymore yeah. and going, oh, I finally can sleep properly. And around me were the spirits of, you know, departed loved ones and a voice that I remember hearing in my head ever since I was a little girl. And that turned out to be one of my spiritual guides. And it was at that point that I realized all the voices in my head weren't necessarily me. And I came away from that both troubled and comforted in the sense that I now understood that I was never alone. I was not alone. And I was never, I was never, ever alone. And I never will be alone. And the flip side of that is that I will never be alone, if that right. makes sense. Yeah. Right. So, and unlike, yeah, un- unlike with Ozark, she was put in an empty waiting room with nobody around. You had others around you. I had others around me. I had uh, my mother, my father, and my maternal grandmother, and my paternal grandfather were there. I'm a scaredy cat. Hearing is probably the difference. Susan's a medium. 
I had a ah! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> my father came to me when he was past, he's my biological one, three days before I found him. And I felt like someone was pinning me down on my shoulders on the bed. I couldn't breathe. He was coming to ask my forgiveness, which I was able to give. My husband thought someone broke into the house and was physically attacking me. 